Let's jump into it. My name is Sean, here with my colleague Matt to talk about what's new with Apple operating systems. But that's not all we're going to talk about. First, we'll take a quick look at the major announcements. Then, we'll talk about some new functionality in Champ Pro to help with upgrades. We'll learn how to actually upgrade devices using different Champ MDMs. We'll discuss the Champ and Apple beta programs, and we'll leave some time at the end for a Q&A. So, let's take a look at the new operating systems. We're going to review the highlights of what Apple introduced, but not go too in-depth. There are a lot of great resources for that. We have at the end of this section QR codes that will direct you to the Apple pages on their website all about their new operating systems. On September 6th of this year, Apple released its new major operating systems for iOS 18, iPadOS 18, macOS Sequoia 15, VisionOS 2, and watchOS 11, and tvOS 18. Let's take a look at the highlights. First, on iOS 18, which includes Apple Intelligence, which we will discuss more later on, the ability to customize the home screen, the ability to lock or hide an app, plus updates to the control center, and the ability to do more with messages like bolding and italicizing text or tapping back with any emoji. iPadOS 18 includes many of the same enhancements as iOS 18, plus improvements to the calculator and notes app. For example, you can save the math note, the addition of the scientific calculator, and smart script makes handwriting clearer. Mac OS 15 also includes Apple Intelligence, plus setup assistant updates. MDM can now configure the use of hardware MAC address instead of a private MAC address on a managed Wi-Fi network, and more. Envision OS 2 expanded its management capabilities, including the ability to enroll in Apple Vision Pro via automated device enrollment. It also now supports most MDM configurations, commands, and payloads, like passcode policy, domains, web content filter payloads, and more. And on watchOS, there are updates to activity, giving in-depth data of workouts, a new Vitals app which highlights health metrics, and much more. As a reminder, you can enroll Apple Watch into MDM with that paired iPhone with Jamf. And tvOS includes enhancements to subtitles, live captions, which allows users to read what others are saying on a FaceTime call. And also as a reminder, you can enroll Apple TV into MDM, which we see a lot in hospital, manufacturing and retail, and education use cases. Let's now talk about Apple Intelligence. As of this recording on October 22nd, Apple Intelligence is still in beta, but is expected to GA with the release of Mac OS 15.1, iOS 18.1, and iPad OS 18.1. Apple Intelligence offers users a personalized intelligence system integrated into the iOS, iPadOS, and macOS experience that leverages general models to create text and images while taking actions based on a deep understanding of a user's context. Siri will have more awareness of a personal context, and its deep knowledge of Apple's products and features offers users better ways to help. Private cloud compute handles more complex requests while protecting your privacy. While Apple Intelligence is aware of your personal information, your data is never stored on Apple servers, only the parts of your request that require large language model processing are sent to the cloud, and the Apple Silicon-based server code is available for independent auditing and verification. And for developers with new app intents, APIs, and frameworks, they can integrate system-level features like Siri, writing tools, and Image Playground right into their apps. A little later on in this presentation, we will come back to Apple Intelligence to discuss more. There are also updates to manage Apple accounts, Apple Business Manager and Apple School Manager, and more. First, for managed Apple ad accounts, IT admins can limit new Apple accounts created on the domain to only be managed Apple accounts. Organizations that want to ensure they can manage and own all Apple accounts using their, dom their domain will now be able to capture Apple accounts that use their organization's domain without needing to connect to an identity provider, and users will have the option to convert their existing Apple account into a managed Apple account. App School Manager and Apple Business Ma Manager work in conjunction with MDM to deploy devices, view inventory, purchase apps and volume, and man manage user accounts. Those updates include automated device enrollment, which works with Apple Business Manager and Apple School Manager and your MDM, has new updates including being extended to Apple Vision Pro. 
Automated device enrollment for macOS Sequoia will now support WebAuth N for web authentication. There are updated setup assistant skip keys, and Apple Vision Pro and Apple Watch can be added to and will show up on your Apple Business Manager and Apple School Manager portal. Moving on to activation lock. Activation lock ensures that only those authorized to lock a compatible computer or mobile device can do so, even if the device has been wiped. But previously, if activation lock was left on unintentionally, an organization cannot reprovi reprovision that device. Now, in Apple Business Manager or Apple School Manager, you can turn off organizationally linked and user linked activation lock for iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, or Apple Vision Pro devices that your organization owns. There are also improvements with declarative device management. At this year's Jamf Nation user conference, we go in depth during our keynote about how Jamf supports CDM today and our plans for the future. At the end of this presentation, we will share a link to that keynote. As I mentioned earlier, here are some QR codes to Apple's website about all the new features and functionalities for each operating system. I'll give us a few moments for folks to scan the codes, but I do want to point out an important note when looking at the new features or operating systems. Be sure to check that the devices you have in your fleet are compatible with any particular feature or operating system. You can learn more by visiting these pages. Let's now move on to why and how to upgrade your devices. For Apple devices, an upgrade refers to a new major version of the operating system. For example, going from Mac OS 14 to Mac OS 15. An update, on the other hand, refers to a minor version, like going from Mac OS 15.0 to Mac OS 15.1. This section will focus mostly on upgrades. But why upgrade devices? When devices are running outdated software, consistency, security, and user experience are all compromised. So the first reason to upgrade is to reduce security vulnerabilities. Regularly updating the operating system on devices ensures that they will have the latest security patches and bug fixes. MDM allows you to set up automatic updates on Mac OS and mobile devices to make this process easier. The second and third reason are about your end users, keeping them happy with new Apple features and keeping them productive throughout the upgrade process and the productivity that new operating systems can unlock. Finally, updating operating systems provides access to new management features, which will help your organizations configure the needs of your end users based on your environment. This brings me to our next point. What does same-day support mean? Apple is well known for its success on the consumer side, but with each passing year, we are seeing Apple innovate with its products and services, providing businesses and schools more tools to be successful. At Jamf, our purpose is to simplify work by supporting, accelerating, and extending Apple's products and services to businesses and schools. Same-day support of Apple operating systems has long been a strength of Jamf. Since 2012, we have been same-day support ready, which means not a single delay in compatibility in supporting new Apple operating systems when they become available. What does this mean for you? It means that you can make new versions available immediately to your end users if you choose, but you can also take time to test and to validate the operating systems in your environment. But again, if you want to launch it immediately, you have the ability to do so. Let's now take a look at what Jam supports. First up is compatibility. Compatibility means Apple admins can upgrade Apple devices without breaking management or security workflows, like inventory reporting, distributing applications, running policies, and more. Compatibility also means that you can actually upgrade. Without it, you cannot take advantage of the most efficient upgrade paths or users experience downtime from breaking workflows. Organizations can enroll institutionally owned Apple Vision Pro devices using automated device enrollment. This enrollment method immediately enrolls and configures an Apple Vision Pro device as soon as the user turns it on without IT or user interaction. Enrolling devices via automated device enrollment also prevents users from removing the MDM profile from that device. There are also new restrictions to allow or disallow different Mac OS and iOS features, including Apple intelligence features. As these features are still in beta as of this recording on October 22nd, admins can now test these features with devices that are running the beta versions of iOS 18.1, iPadOS 18.1, 
or Mac OS 15.1. The restrictions include Genmoji, Image Playground, Image Wand, and Writing Tools. Jail will provide more information on general support once the dot one operating systems for iOS, iPadOS, and macOS are generally available. For more information, visit JamPro 11.9 release notes or video, which again, we will share a link out at the end of this presentation. There is a new profile key to disable MAC address randomization on macOS. This disables the use of our private Wi-Fi address for devices connecting to enterprise networks. There's also a new key for security and privacy, enable X-Protect malware upload. This allows Gatekeeper to prompt users to upload block malware to Apple to improve malware detection. JamPro continues to improve the onboarding experience with new steps to skip and set up assistant. Hammonds can choose to not display the following panes for computers and mobile devices. Get started on macOS 15 or later. Voice selection on iOS 18 or later. And intelligence, which again is still in beta, but can test devices running the beta versions of macOS 15.1 and iOS and iPadOS 18.1. JamPro also includes two new system extension types for computers with macOS 15 or later. In macOS 15, end users can see and disable previously installed or managed system extensions, for example, in, for example, endpoint security tools, through system settings or finder. Admins can now use the new settings, non-removable system extensions, and non-removable system extensions from UI to prevent end users from remove, removing these extensions like important macOS security software. Depending on the Jamf MDM you are using relevant to your industry, you can learn more about the specific features that Jamf Pro, Jamf School, and Jamf Now support in their respective release notes. Now, let's talk about how to upgrade devices. Apple allows MDM to defer upgrades for up to 90 days on managed devices. You can configure the deferrals for major upgrades, minor updates, or application updates, for example, Safari. Deferring upgrades to managed devices is an important strategy for IT admins as they continue to test applications, new Apple features, or new workflows, or your infrastructure. For example, if there are impactful features that are being GA'd in macOS 15.1 when it releases, as an admin, you can defer your upgrades while your internal teams test those features. Champ always recommends testing features before rolling out to your organization. With Jamf Pro or Jamf School, you can defer an upgrade to scope devices by creating a configuration profile with a restrictions payload. And in Jamf Now, you can defer an upgrade with a blueprint. Additionally, a restricted software record in Jamf Pro for the install assistant process can prevent administrator users from updating macOS using a full macOS installer application. Another important aspect is enforcing a minimum operating system when a user unboxes a device for the first time. With Jamf Pro, you can now set a minimum operating system for Mac, iPhone, and, or iPad. This means users will need to go through a software update before they can continue to enroll a device, and it removes enrolling a device with an old operating system that is out of compliance. When deferring upgrades, one major reason might be to test software. Both Jamf and Apple offer beta programs to test software before implementing. For Jamf, you can access this via your Jamf account at account.jamf.com, where you can provide feedback to software developers. An important note, make sure you test only on test devices and not production devices. Jamf beta software must not be installed on production devices. For Apple, you can access the beta from appleseed for IT at beta.apple.com. You can test the OS against IT infrastructure or your apps, for example. Get pre-releases of iOS, iPadOS, tvOS, and watchOS. And to sign in, use your managed Apple account from Apple Business Manager or Apple School Manager. Now, let's ch chat about how to actually upgrade, first, for iOS and iPadOS devices. Whether you are using Jam Pro, Jam School, or Jamf Now, you can choose if IT will upgrade or if a user will upgrade. Once you are ready to upgrade, Jamf Pro users can use managed software updates to schedule and update the OS of mobile devices. You can download and schedule to install workflow using the declarative device management protocol, which allows devices to act proactively and autonomously. 
with managed software updates, IT can scope updates and patches using smart groups, remaining in full control of how the patches and updates roll out. In addition, custom notifications keep end users in the loop. With Champ Pro and Managed Software Updates workflow, it's easy to view inventory information, view config profile statuses, send a remote command to download and then schedule an update, and more. Very nice. For Jam School users, you can upgrade iOS on an individual device or groups of devices by sending an update command to those devices. And for Jam Now users, you can use the OS Updates feature to ensure devices have the latest versions of iOS and iPadOS. Word of note, Apple does not yet have documentation for MDM to update Apple Vision Pro operating systems. For now, upgrading Vision OS must be done by the user. Now, let's talk about updating Macs. First, with Jamf Pro. The recommended Jamf option is to use the Schedule, Install, and Update with Managed Software Updates, powered by the Declarative Device Management Protocol, which we discussed in the previous slide. With Managed Software Updates, plans are simple to create, easy to deploy, and the process is visible to you, the administrator. On devices with macOS 14 or later and Jamf Pro, you can download and schedule to install and upgrade. Since this workflow is using the declarative protocol, once the update plan is defined, macOS will handle, will handle user notifications and reminders communicating the eventual enforcement deadline and update to the end user. Computers then proactively and automatically give feedback to Jamf Pro regarding the upgrades process. You can also use a max a mass action command in Jamf Pro to update the operating system on target computers that are on macOS 11 or later, supervised, or enrolled via pre-stage enrollment in Jam Pro. With Jam School, enrolled devices report their available updates during their regular device inventory check-ins. To install updates in bulk to your managed fleet in Jam School, navigate to the Devices, Update section in the sidebar, then select the target OS version that you wish to install. Managed devices that have previously reported this operating system version as available will be listed in the interface and you can select all or some of the devices listed to target the update to. And once you made the selection on, of device targets, you just click the install button for the update process to be initiated. If you want to erase data, the erase install option is a command to install macOS and erase the hard drive at the same time. For Jap Now users, admins can choose the update any single device as new devices are added to the ecosystem or on as, as needed basis per device. Once an update is available and you decide to move forward with upgrading, you can then choose if you want to upgrade a single device, a group of devices, or all devices that are auto-enrolled with pending updates. Mm -hmm. Upgrading devices is an important aspect to any admin's job. To bring today's presentation to an end, here are some QR codes with links to some of the topics we discussed today. The Managed Software Update JNAC blog is a great example of a customer use case when using the Managed Software Update workflow. There is also the Jam Pro release blog, which goes into more detail about some of those features we discussed earlier. I will now give people a few moments to scan the codes. With that going on, we're about to hop into the Q&A, so please think of any questions and direct them there. And that's it for today's session. I hope you have found this insightful and learned some useful information that can help you with navigating this year's Apple upgrades.